Shake Zula, the Mike Rula, the old schooler. You want a trip? We'll bring it to you. Here's 107 facts all about Aqua Teen Hunger Force here on Cartoon Hangover, presented by Channel Frederator. I'm your host, Nikki. Let's get into the list. Number one in the hood, G. Number one, Aqua Teen Hunger Force is a spin off of Space Ghost Coast to Coast, which was Cartoon Network's first fully produced original TV show for stoners. Number two, the Space Ghost episode that Aqua Teen Hunger Force is derived from was titled Baffler Meal. It featured three corporate mascots from the fictional fast food chain Burger Trench, which served as a prototype for Meatwatch. Master Shake and Frylock, all of whom could beat up the Hamburglar. Number three, the creators Dave and Matt liked the characters so much they went and developed a show around them. Number four, the three mascot characters were conceived early on in Space Ghost's run, but the episode featuring them did not air until well after Octane Hunger Force had become popular. Number five, series creators Dave and Matt wrote together on Space Ghost Coast to Coast, Squid Billies, C Lab 2021, and several other unaired pilots. Number six, George Lowe, the voice actor for Space Ghost, has had guest spots in numerous episodes of Octane Hunger Force. A few of his roles have been the DJ in Mail Order Bride, Space Ghost in Octane Hunger Force colon movie film for theaters, and even playing himself in the episode Antenna. Basically, he's the Michael Caine of Octane Hunger Force if Octane Hunger Force was directed by Christopher Nolan. Number seven, Lowe became a member of the show's cast in 2011 by landing the role of announcing the title of each of season eight's episodes. Number eight, season eight through 11 all featured a different title for the show. They were Aqua Unit Patrol Squad 1, Aqua Something, you know, whatever, Aqua TV Show Show, and Aqua Teen Hunger Force Forever. Number 9. The reason for the name changes? Boredom. The creators Dave and Matt were tired of the original title and wanted to, quote, come up with a new fresh open and a whole new show just to try it out. Number 10. The show was made into a feature film which premiered in theaters on April 13th, 2007. Number 11. Aqua Teen Hunger Force colon movie film for theaters was the first feature film made from an Adult Swim TV show. Number 12. The show's two creators wrote all its episodes. They also directed many of them and even lent their voices to the series. Number 13, Dave Willis is the voice of Meatwad and Matt Malero is the voice of Ur. Number 14, since the show's first episodes were so short, most of the writing was done without an outline. Number 15, Dana Snyder nabbed the job of voicing Master Shake with the help of an old college friend who went to high school with Dave Willis. Number 16, Snyder's first audition was a drunken abusive voicemail left on creator Dave Willis's phone. Number 17, the mall in the first episode is taken directly from the Powerpuff girls. It's even called Powerpuff Mall. Number 18. The show takes place in southern New Jersey, but in season 8, the location was changed to Seattle, Washington. Number 19. In season 9, the setting was changed yet again to the fictional location of Seattle, New Jersey. Number 20. The teen's original name was Teen Hunger Force, a reference to the team's goal of conquering teen hunger. Number 21. The show's first few episodes were about the team solving crimes. Its creators only went with the format because Cartoon Network executives did not want the show to be about fast food doing random things. It's totally what the show is about now. Number 22. The team decides to stop solving crimes because it wasn't making a whole lot of money. Number 23. Gangsta rap pioneer Schooly D wrote and performed the show's theme song. He also did some of the show's narration. Number 24. After Malero and Willis completed a script, they would spend a week working on a rough video of the show and completing voiceover work. Number 25. Both the show's creators provided backup vocals. Number 26. There was a lawsuit filed in 2006 against the show and Schooly D by a man who claimed he was not compensated for his work on the theme song. Number 27. The accuser demanded $150,000 for every time the series was aired after the lawsuit was filed. He also demanded that all existing copies of the series DVDs be impounded and for Aqua Teen Hunger Force to seize broadcast. The case was dismissed in 2007. Number 28. The theme song for season 10 was made by Flying Lotus. Number 29. The cold opening of the show show for its first two seasons was always a short segment about Dr. Weird, whose actions would often lead to the episode's conflict. Number 30. In season 3, the cold opening was changed to segments from an unaired spin-off pilot called Space Cataz, starring the Plutonians. Number 31. Cold openings were cut out from the series once its fourth season premiered, but Dr. Weird and Steven did return in a one-off cold opening for the season 8 premiere, Alien Part 1. Number 32. The show was cancelled by Adult Swim in 2015 against the wishes of both creators. Number 33. Both both creators actually learned of the show's cancellation halfway through the production of its 11th season from people at the animation studio. Number 34. The second to last episode was called The Last One Forever and Ever. For real this time. We fucking mean it. And because they didn't actually mean it, the last episode was called The Greatest Story Ever Told. 
Number 35. The creative team had planned a sequel to the movie and finished the script, but the show got cancelled before production could begin. Creators were thinking about doing a Kickstarter to try and rally up the $3.4 million they would need to produce it. Hey, if Zach Braff can do it. Number 36. Aqua Teen Hunger Force is the longest running original show in Adult Swim history. Number 37. In September 2010, the Adult Swim Shop introduced a hot air balloon in the likeness of Meatwad that could be yours for a mere $70,000. Hold on, let me go rob a jewelry store. Store. Number 38. In 2007, Turner Broadcasting put up LED displays depicting Moon Knights in 11 different cities as a guerrilla marketing campaign. Number 39. Authorities in Boston found the Moon Knight displays to be suspicious and thought they may be improved explosive devices. Major roads and waterways in the city were closed for investigation. Turner owned up to being the source of the LEDs and paid $2 million to the Boston Police Department. $1 million for the fees of their investigation and another million out of goodwill. Number 40. According to Willis, the show was cancelled because Adult Swim's president, Mike Lazo, quote, was ready to move on from it. Lazo was the one to pull the plug. Number 41. The show only cost around $60,000 an episode to make, which is surprisingly low for an animated television show. Number 42. To get the right sound for meat while moving around, sound designers bought 8 pounds of hamburger meat and squished it next to a microphone. Number 43. Similarly, they got the sounds for Master Shake using an actual milkshake. Number 44. The neighbor never calls Frylock and Meatwad by their real names. He always calls them Fryman or Meatlock. Number 45. The episode Brood Witch is a nod to Don Hertzfield, an indie animator who is a big source of inspiration for Willis and Malero. Number 46. The picture of Dr. Weird's castle in New Jersey is actually taken from an episode of the show The Real Adventures of Johnny Quest titled Escape to Quest World. It's a shot of the Bell Isle Institute where Dr. Jeremiah Surd is housed. Number 47. Dave Willis has said that Master Shake sleeps in a chair in the living room because they forgot to give him a room in the house. Number 48. The show reached out to Steve Martin to play a character in the movie, but they couldn't get the schedules to work out. He was probably too busy having awesome white hair. Number 49, the show also reached out to bassist Getty Lee to play himself, but he was too busy recording his solo album. What's up everyone, just wanted to let you guys know that this Thursday on Channel Frederator, we have 107 Peanuts facts, and next Tuesday right here on Cartoon Hangover, we have 107 facts all about Cowboy Bebop. Don't miss these two episodes of Tuned Up, now let's get back to the facts. Number 15, when asked if there will be more Aqua Teen spinoffs or movies, Dan Willis responded, never say never. Number 51, Aqua Teen Hunger Force is created with Adobe Photoshop Photoshop images that are animated in Adobe After Effects and edited using Final Cut Pro. Number 52. Writing the script for an episode takes Willis and Malero around 4 or 5 weeks. Number 53. The main trio is in nearly every episode except Season 5's Sirens and Season 10's Space Adunts. Number 54. One of the leading candidates to voice Master Shake was a man doing a Christopher Walken impression, but after Dana Snyder's quote auditioned, the show's staff knew they had found their man or their shape. Number 55. The show's pilot episode, titled Rabot, premiered unannounced at 5am on December 30th, 2000. This was a whole six months before Adult Swim even officially started. Number 56. The pilot premiere was listed on the channel's official schedule as Special Programming and aired alongside an unfinished Harvey Birdman pilot and two episodes of C-Lab 2021. Number 57. In the original storyboard for the pilot, Space Ghost was set to appear near the end of the episode. However, this idea was scrapped for unknown reasons. Number 58. At the start of the pilot episode, Master Shake says, Dancing is forbidden. This phrase was remixed into the ending credit song of every episode. Number 59. In the episode, Working Stiffs, it is revealed that Frylock has a doctorate degree in biomedical hypertonics and a master's degree in cryogenic sequencing and thermite plasmatics. Number 60. Aqua Teen Hunger Force ran a live action episode as their finale for season 6. This episode featured H. John Benjamin as Master Shake, T-Pain as Frylock, and David Long Jr. as Carl and an exercise ball as Meatwad. Number 61. David Long Jr. got the role as Live Action Carl by winning an open casting call sponsored by Burger King. Number 62. Former Adult Swim Vice President Mike Lazo did not want the episode to air, but Willis and Malero pushed it through, believing it would be their final episode. Right. Number 63. Because of this, the episode was titled Last, Last One Forever and Ever. Much to Willis and Malero's surprise, however, the show was renewed for a seventh season. Number 64. Meatwad has made cameos in two episodes of The Brack Show, Brack Street, and Bully. Number 65. In 2007, Carl hosted his own web series titled 
Carl's Stone Cold Lock of the Century of the Week, which premiered on the Adult Swim website. The series followed Carl talking about sports. Number 66. Out of all the main characters in the series, Carl has died the most. Not as many times as Kenny, but of course a lot. Oh my god! We killed Carl! Number 67. Among the three Aqua Teens, Shake has died the most. Number 68. Carl's car, Too Wicked, is based off of Matt Malera's own car. Number 69. Hip Hop Duo Dual Core released a song about Carl titled Too Wicked on their first album. Number 70. The finale of the third season is named after Carl but was renamed Space Gate World for its DVD release. Number 71. In Space Gate World, creator Matt Malera appears in cartoon form as a man delivering Chinese takeout to Carl's house. Number 72. The full versions of the puppet TV shows from the series can be found hidden on the Volume 2 DVDs. Number 73. Voice actor Dave Willis plays an angry caller in the video game Grand Theft Auto V who sounds very similar to Carl. The call can be heard on the in-game radio station Flylo FM. Number 74. Dr. Weird and Steve are both voiced by C. Martin Croker. Number 75. Frylock has a picture of himself with a younger Dr. Weird in his bedroom. Number 76. Carl's last name is Brutanana Deluski. Number 77. Malero and Willis created an Aqua Teen spin off titled Soul Quest Overdrive. It featured four pieces of athletic equipment that were based on the Bible fruit from the finals of Aqua Teen Hunger Force's fifth season. Six episodes were ordered, but only four of them aired, and the show was canceled shortly after. Number 78. Footage of the golf episode of Soul Quest Overdrive was used in the Aqua Teen episode Sweet Sea. Number 79. During the Aqua Teen Hunger Force live tour in 2010, 10, Dave Willis confirmed that Master Shake, Firelock, and Meatwad were all creations of Dr. Weird, making the main trio siblings. Number 80. In typical April Fool's fashion, Adult Swim advertised that they would be broadcasting the Aqua Teen Hunger Force film a week early on their channel, and they did, but only in a tiny box in the corner of the screen with no sound while the regular block aired in the background. Number 81. The video game Aqua Teen Hunger Force Zombie Ninja Pro Am was released in 2007 for the PlayStation 2. It was a strange amalgamation of fighting, kart racing, and golfing, which feels like a combination of all the Super Mario games. Number 82. In the aforementioned game, it's revealed by Frylock that Shake's age is pushing 40. Number 83. Carl's favorite NFL team is the New York Giants. Everybody knows my love for the Giants is well documented. Number 84. The Moon and Knights were inspired by the buried copies of the E.T. the Extraterrestrial game for the Atari 2600. Number 85. Ur's voice sounds different in the episode The Granite Family because Matt Malero, the voice of Ur, had a cold. Number 86. The Plutonians Oglethorpe and Emery are named after two universities in Atlanta, where the studio William Streets produces Adult Swim. Number 87. Demon Spawn rap artist MCP Pants wears a shower cap and a diaper in every one of his incarnations except for his vampire form. Number 88. Willie Nelson, not THE Willie Nelson, just a spider living in the Aqua Teen's attic, is the final character to make an on-screen appearance. Number 89. The landlord of the Aqua Teens is a 40-40-year-old vampire named Markula. Number 90. Carrie Means, the voice of Frylock, also voiced Thundercles on the Adult Swim series The Brack Show. Number 91. Master Shake is allergic to shellfish. Number 92. In the Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie, it is revealed that Master Shake can remove his straw. Number 93. In the original Space Ghost Coast to Coast episode, Master Shake's flavor is depicted as chocolate. This was later changed because the creators thought that chocolate resembled something a lot more disgusting. Number 94. The green substance that Shake shoots from his straw suggests that he is either mint or pistachio flavored. Both sound good to me. Number 95. In the episode She Creature, it is implied that Shake can't breathe without his lid on. Number 96. In the final episode of the series, it is revealed that Shake's yellow hands are actually yellow dish gloves. Or or ham bananas. Number 97. Meet what has no brain. Instead, he has a plastic brain shaped squeaky toy. Well, I'll be damned. You got a toy brain. Number 98. When he was created by Dr. Weird, Miwa was originally given spray cheese to substitute a brain. Number 99. When Dr. Weird created Shake, he gave him half of his hair and his kidney as a brain. Number 100. The original version of Miwa that appeared in Space Ghost Coast to Coast is very similar to how he is now, with the exception of his personality. Number 101. Miwa was born in September, but the opening theme song says he's a Taurus. Number 102. In the episode Balloon and Stein, it's revealed that Frylock wears braces. Number 103. The visible Frylock poster in Frylock's bedroom indicates that his fries are supported by bone. However, in the episode Super Birthday Snake, Frylock braids his fries. Ouch. Number 104. Miwad is the only member of the Aqua Teen Trio to be alive at the end of the series. Spoiler. Number 105. In the episode Der Inflatable Fuhrer, 
it is implied that Shake is a Scientologist. Number 106. Shake has a disturbing taste for human flesh. Number 107. Shake is a big fan of the famous, critically acclaimed film, Battlefield Earth. Thank you so much for watching Tune Up's 107 Fact videos where we cover everything you ever wanted to know about your favorite cartoons. Definitely check out our 107 Fact video on Channel Frederator, your favorite cartoon destination place on YouTube. And for fans of Adult Swim, we also have 107 Rick and Morty facts as well. Don't forget to download the Channel Frederator app where we have an exclusive Penmore cartoon called Butt Dance that he did in college, exclusive to the app. So check out the app, download today, and remember, Frederator loves you.